What's up guys? This is Jason over Think Gaming. We're going to do a chill ass video. So in this video, I'm not going to have any direction. I'm just going to talk a lot about random shit, kind of my shit in my life. And it's eventually going to get to the whole Destiny, you know, FOMO with OnlyFans. Now, this isn't a Destiny with OnlyFans video. It's more my personal life and what I think of it. And it's going to take a while for me to get to it, but hopefully you guys will sit back and enjoy just stories. I just want to talk. I want to tell stories about my life, right? So first of all, if many guys that have been here on the channel know that I'm an artist. Like I can paint, I can draw, I can do random shit with art. The thing that I really love is body painting. If you haven't heard of body painting, there's a show on Netflix called Skin Wars. Check it out. A lot of those dudes I actually know and have met personally. It's, it's, they're, they're pretty cool people. It's just the talent on there is out of this world. But anyways, we'll get into that and my love of body painting. First of all, my love of art started back when I was going to school. In fact, it was after high school when I started going to go get my electronics degree. Um, during that time, like uh, all the way till I graduated, every day, every professor we had, I would just draw like little caricatures of them. And I would love making fucking people laugh. That was my thing. It's like, I could draw a teacher and make it look just like him in the cartoon silly version. And everybody in the class would be passing around the fucking paper laughing. And that's what made me like, dude, I want to do art. I fucking love it. And then when I got my first professional job as a technician, you know, I was a bench tech and it was in this uh, big corporate kind of corporate uh, environment, you know, and every once in a while it would get quiet. So I would pass around, you know, I would draw our bosses or just people we'd make fun of. And, you know, then everyone's like, tell me, you need to draw. I mean, you need to paint. That's what they're telling me. I was like, nah, nah, you need to start painting. It took a couple of years because during that time, it was my early 20s. I was going out a lot. And I remember going to an event where they had art, dude, and they were painting and art here in my city. Live art was huge. It was just blowing up. Right. And I checked it out and I freaking loved it. I was like, these dudes are out here. And it was women too. Painting, it was just something I've never felt before. The music back then, just so many original uh, bands. And it was just a great little like festival that they would have every once in a while. And I, and I would go to every single one of them. And that's when my love art just grew. I said, I need to paint. So I started painting. I kind of sucked, you know. And eventually I kept getting better and better. And now it took years to... One of my friends, actually, at the time, you know, when he was around, um, I say that because he passed away right before I started YouTube, but um, he believed in everything I fucking did, everything he believed in. He pushed me to go and sign up because they would pick artists for this event. So I was like, dude, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Well, they picked me. So after that, I was always getting picked, always doing those events, doing live art. Oh my God, I can't explain to you all the great artists I met, the great people selling my pieces, the environment, just painting in front of people. That was just something that just gave me like a good vibe. I fucking loved it at the time. I can't express to you guys like I, I can't. Man, I wish I could go back to some of those days. It's not like that anymore. Um, the main guy who ran it, he, he's not in, he's not in my city anymore. He's not even, you know, in the United States. He's somewhere in Europe. But anyways, good times. So during that time, one of the artists I met there, I, I was doing a live uh, a live painting at a bar. And, uh, you know, we would do them at bars sometimes. And when I was there, um, she was body painting. And I went in, to, I, I checked it out. I was all oh, this pretty cool. She goes, you should try it. You need to try it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, long story short, she set it up. Or I ended up trying it. And I did pretty good. I was scared because I was like, it's not my thing. But I did pretty good. And then I got addicted to body kit body painting. I could not stop. I sucked. I think I sucked looking at my early work, but I got really good. And at least I, I think I got good from what I started compared to that. Like, and then I started airbrushing. I started adding different techniques to body painting that wasn't going around where, where I'm from. I started like sticking out. So a lot of people were just, you know, wanting to get painted by me. I, I would get, you know, inbox all the time. There was a body paint organization they ended up contacting me. I ended up, you know, linking up with a lot of professional photographers. It was just a whole new lifestyle. And that body painting lifestyle, that's when I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to body paint. Like I, I just had this vision, like I'm going to just try to be the best. I'm going to keep getting better and better because I would just get better within time. Like every painting was getting better than the other. 
uh, than than the one before. So I, I really enjoyed body painting during that time. I started um, we body painted at a at a comic con here, and that was freaking awesome. Painting in public instead of these bars and these little events. So I was all like, you know, at a comic con, I was like, wow, that was awesome. And then me and um, there was drama that body paint group. It was the main body paint group. So me and a couple guys, we got together and we started our own group. We ended up taking over the Comic-Con, got them out of there. <laughs> it was just us. So I had my own body painting group. Like me and two other guys were like the main guys. It was us three. They called us the trio. And from then, it, it was good. It was good. And I am not shy. When I talk about cosplayers, I know a lot of the cosplayers. I've met a lot of them. I got into the cosplaying scene because I body painted. I started, you know, airbrushing suits, custom suits, helmets, started props, everything. I just, I started getting a lot of fucking work and I wasn't enjoying it. It was taking away from my body painting time. I was like, man, I just, I'm getting too many, you know, too many gigs, but they were paying from the cosplayers and it was cool. You know, I was getting paid. So I was like, all right. But my body painting is what I took serious. Even that Skin Wars that I talked about, they ended up contacting me and wanted me to go audition for them. But one of the requirements was I had to uh, sign something before I even got audition that if I got picked, you know, I would be available for so many weeks. Talked to my boss and it was just like one week too long. It was just in case I got picked to film. You know, I knew I wouldn't make it long. I just didn't want to take the risk. But anyways, away from that, um, the body paint group I was in, we ended up. I, I don't know. I guess I got into some disagreements with them and I wanted to brand myself. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to brand myself. So um, I linked up with uh, some professional photographers. My boy, he was in the cosplay scene. He was like the photographer. It's great. It was great. So I linked up with him and we started like uh, getting some shoots Started doing shoots because I said, I'm going to buy my own booth at a comic con and sell prints. Like I thought it was like selling to the homeboys. I thought it was all like, hey, you know, you want to buy a print? Hey, you know, whatever. I didn't know what to expect. And I'll get into that story here soon. But show you some examples of my prints that I had. Not sure if you guys can see them, but the quality, it, it was good quality. My prints were not cheapy. So those are just a few of the prints that I was selling. And when I sold them at my own booth, I had my own banner, I had everything. I'd spent like, man, with body painting, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars just on supplies, airbrushes, on everything just to get. I was even paying for the models to get in. And during that time, I wasn't using regular body painting models that everyone was using. I was using models that were aspiring to be, you know, bigger models or um, uh, body lifting models. Like it was like I was real selective on who I used. And in the prints, too, and everything. Oh, here's a Yaya Han one real quick. <laughs> she, she actually wrote, like, my favorite body painting on there. It's hilarious. But anyways, um, yeah, it just, I was real selective on who I chose. So when I sold the prints, I'm like, man, I'm going to, like, people are going to know who they are. People are going to support them because people kept coming to my booth asking, hey, are you painting this girl that day? Like, they knew who I was painting. So I was like, man, I'm going to be successful. And I wasn't. My booth fucking sucked. And I thought I was going to make so much more money. I had so many fucking prints, but I did make money. And you know who I made money off? These lonely guys, man. And that's when it hit me. I'm all like, the only people I'm making money are these lonely guys that come to my booth. And I was selling my prints for a lot. And they were buying multiple. As I mean, they would just give me like whatever it was, a hundred bucks and just buy like all the money's worth of prints. So I'm like, what the hell? I'm only selling to these type of guys. And it just, it, it just like, I felt guilty. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like these dudes, you don't have a chance with these models. Like what's wrong with you? Like, why are you doing this? So it kind of upset me. So I let it be, you know, conventions over. And I had a lot of time to think about it. And during that time, just everything started changing into the whole cosplay scene. The girls started doing all these lewds. 
not nudes, these like teasing pics. They started promoting Patreon like crazy. They started doing OnlyFans just throughout the months. It was just worse and worse. Just regular cosplay models start doing nude stuff, you know, get trying to get paid. It was crazy. The shift that, you know, uh, that was happening. They were getting a lot of these lonely guys and trying to make them make money off them. That's all they were doing and getting nude. Like back in the day, not sure if you guys remember, but sending a nude was like, we weren't cool about like send nudes, send nudes. It was like a rare thing. And now they're selling them to public. It's freaking crazy. It's crazy how times have changed. I, I don't know. Just maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm old, but times have definitely changed. So I was thinking, what's the next step for my body painting? And, and the only next step was to promote myself and grow more and look at other people who are successful. So I was still looking at the dude that does the black tape project. And I started noticing I didn't like his style. He always had girls around him like, like I'm the man kind of thing. And I didn't like that. I was like, dude, this is trashy. Like instead of painting like your skills, you're more being slutty about it. And, and, you know, I'm all about clean work and, you know, different styles and airbrushing styles. And it's like, man, these guys that are successful are just selling the women. And I started getting messages on my Instagram about women, you know, thinking I was a, a, a woman because of the, the body post. They thought I was the girl I was posting. They didn't realize it was an art page, even though it was written all over it. And it just like, I got tired of that shit. I fucking got tired of it, man. And I saw the direction it was changing. So that's why I started doing YouTube. Uh, you know, I was all like, let me just fucking do YouTube. And just like, nobody was watching my videos. No one gave a fuck. I was doing, doing gaming videos. The truth is, even if I do a gaming video right now, no one cares. No one gives a fuck. And I know that. And it's just, that's not my style. That's not what I like doing. I like talking to my audience and I know my audience. Back then it was like, whatever. But I'm, I am going to do a gaming video soon. I'm planning on it. I was going to try to get it this week. We'll see. Um, it's not even going to be a big deal when you guys see it, whatever. Um, I just want to do it to do it. But anyways, back to what I was talking about is, you know, doing YouTube I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy, a di you know, my style, what I'm doing now. I enjoy just talking and not getting a fucking being different. If you guys want to see fucking gaming videos, there's tons of other gaming channels. What I like to do, because I've seen a lot of shit. I've seen the changes on YouTube. I'll call out shit that people aren't calling out. That's just what I fucking do. And that's the reason why I called out Destiny FOMO, because I started seeing shit. I didn't like it. We all know the fucking drama. We all know where it happened. And that's how a lot of you found my channel. So recently... She, she put that OnlyFans thing out, right? And I briefly mentioned it. Because of the pandemic, I didn't want to get into it. I didn't want to care. I was like, whatever. And my last time I talked about her, I talked about Darius Truxton threatening to dox her, which everyone's downplaying that shit. That's fucked up, you know? As much as I criticize her, as much as I say all this shit, I am against doxing. I don't care who it is. So I caught out that OnlyFans real quick because of the pandemic. I, I just didn't want to get into it. What I just saw... She don't give a fuck on a sponsored ad on YouTube. She's promoting her OnlyFans now. now. You know, she was doing it low-key on her social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, but I never really saw anything on, on her YouTube. Now, I may be wrong because I don't follow her, but I got sent the info, and I was like, dude, on an ad, like, really? And here's a good point. Radical Rick calls out all the e-beggars, calls them all out. And he says he's like the best e-beggar, a professional e-beggar. I don't know his exact words he said, but he was like basically crowning himself the e-beggar, anti-e-beggar king. Well, Rick, where's your video? Are you afraid? That's all I got to say. I think he's scared. He's like a call out FOMO. But anyways, back to that. I saw that and I, I watched the video and I was all like, what the fuck am I watching? Like seriously, she gives no fucks on calling out and, and making her OnlyFans account. I'm like, what has this fucking platform got to? What has YouTube gaming got to? That's the reason why I made the video because I wanted to express my concerns. Like, you ain't going to have this shit over here gaming. I've seen the trash. I've seen the corruption, what it did to the cosplay scene. I've seen all what these simps, man, you, you, you can try to teach them. But, oh, my God, they give in to this fucking bullshit. And I understood kind of with the cosplay scene. Oh, this fantasy comic book girl, this and that. And it's come to fucking YouTube, which I am just highly against. And I'm like, what the fuck? Promoting her OnlyFans. Now, I'm going to say, I doubt there's any nudity. So if you guys are thinking that, I, I doubt that she has that. I'm pretty sure they're just lewds of her being, you know, sexy, risque, whatever you want to call it. 
And that's all it is. They're just photos. You can see those photos online. I understand most people are going to be like, you know, let her make her money, this and that. But they don't understand the type of guys that she's kind of fooling. She's got a man. I'm sorry if I'm breaking that to you. If you're watching and you're a simp and you're over here all pissed off at what I'm saying. But she's got a dude and she's happy. And she's just making money off you. And, and, you know, should I call that out? Should I not? It's pretty obvious to most of us. But some people don't fucking really see it. They can't see it. And that's what frustrates me so bad. And that's what I'm highly against. In a recent Twitter post, she stated that she's packing up, you know, her collection. Whether she's moving, who knows what. I, I don't know. But it was just funny because if you look into that post, somebody made a comment. And I got to say, we got to crown this guy simp of the year, simp of the decade. I don't know what. It's pretty extreme. Wow. I would help you, Destiny FOMO, but I'm living in Oregon. Really? <laughs> really? I'm li But I'm living in Oregon. I am in disbelief when I saw this. So if you click on his profile... You'll see more. And it's fucking hilarious. His description states, love cosplay girls and looking for a girlfriend. Oh, no. The same type of motherfucker that bought my fucking prints and just gave me fucking all his money. And why one of the main reasons I quit fucking body painting. I was not going to deal with this shit. And that's where I have a problem is that, you know, let Destiny make her money. But I personally don't feel comfortable of her taking advantage of dudes like this. It's like, I want to sit down and have a talk with this dude. Like, dude, get on Plenty of Fish or Facebook dating or something, you know, and knock that out of your dreams. You're not going to get this gamer girl. It's not going to happen. Like this cosplay fucking comic book girl that comes out straight out comic. That's not going to happen. This beautiful woman is not going to happen. If, if you want to, you know, Satisfy yourself your own way, okay, but stop interacting with them on social media. Stop building up your fi your fantasies. These are people that, oh, you get the potential either driving them crazy or just, uh, or you're, most of them are nice people. They're, they're nice people. They may not go that far, but that's my problem. Like, don't be using these dudes. These are good guys. Some of them are lonely as fuck, but a lot of them are good guys. Some of them are crazy as fuck. Just don't engage with them. I don't, I don't fucking know. That's just where my frustration comes, man. Is using these dudes like this. I, I don't know. It, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I told you, it, all this is off the cuff. These are just a chill video of some of my thoughts, man. And that's where I have the problem with the OnlyFans. Not only is it being advertised on YouTube, which is kind of bullshit during this pandemic, just letting all these advertisements come like this. I mean, it's not like she's showing anything or what, but there's been worse ones. But it's like... Man, <laughs> I called this shit out in the beginning. I called it out when she was doing gaming videos. And, you know, I'm pretty sure in real life, if anyone knows her in real life, she's probably cool as fuck. But what she's doing is just what I'm against. And, and, and that's that's just where it stands. That's how I feel. And if I see shit on YouTube like this, I'm just going to talk about it. There's other people like the quartering and other people who are going to make videos just for clicks. You know, when Invader V made that that video of her, you know, at five dollars, five dollars or, or what was the other girl? Bad Bunny. Or I can't remember her name. Um, I'm probably butchering that name. You know, I didn't talk about those. I wanted to. I should have talked about them on the channel. But I'm like, oh, they're getting crazy clicks. So what am I going to be? Another one of those? It's crazy. But the quartering does know about this situation. Will we talk about it. Who knows? Probably not. You know, I don't think many YouTubers will talk about what's going on. Smash JT just made an awesome video. But I don't think many are. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to chat, ramble, just kind of tell you guys about my life, tell you how I feel and how I feel about the Destiny FOMO OnlyFans situation. Want to make a video? Probably not. I know if I made a video, it would be a totally different format. I, I don't know if I'm going to make a proper video on it or what. I'm already explaining it here. So this is just how I feel. And that's that. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like. If you guys did, you could drop a dislike along with Darius' alt accounts. I'll be catching you guys soon. Peace out.